What does it mean to be a self-taught watercolour artist? So many of us can actually go onto Google and search whatever knowledge or content that we want these days so easily at the tip of our fingers. Now, being self-taught used to be a chip on my shoulder when I first started out as a watercolour artist. I was thinking that because I didn't have a workshop that I went to or I did not learn from a reputable teacher, it also meant that the quality of my work was not as good as someone who was professional or graduated from an art school or did things with fine art. Now, if you are new to my channel, my name is Jillian and today I just want you to sit back, relax and enjoy as I delve into this conversation about the 10 things that I learned as a self-taught watercolour artist. You will also be watching me go through some of my previous artwork and see my journey evolve from the time I started brush lettering, which was where I started with my creative pursuit, and then I moved on to watercolour later. Now, I would be showing you all the various sketchbooks, paintings, the good, the bad, the ugly, just to share with you that a journey is not linear and so many of us have to go through a lot of hard work before we get to where we want to be and even then at this point in time I still see myself as an evolving artist that is constantly learning finding a style that I really love and I'm also at this stage where I also enjoy sharing that passion with you lesson number one I was going to fail more times than I was going to make good art and being a perfectionist, this was something that was really difficult for me because I always had this tendency of wanting to perfect the craft and as you can see from my practice books, you know, I did multiple lines, I would do many pages of the same stroke trying to hone and master that very very skill and I would also study it and try and gain as much of an eye for detail so that I learn not to make the same mistake over and over. Now I realized that that really was my fear of failing and I did not realize that in part of that growth I needed to make bad art in order to slowly grow. So this lesson really hit me hard because sometimes as we become adults, the more we start becoming more proficient at things and getting to know more and more things around us, we also have that innate fear of failing or showing up in a way that isn't really good enough. And this is where I decided to then show up on Instagram to post my artwork and use that platform as a journal and help me to actually identify my progress so that I started to let go of that fear of making bad art and some of that perfectionism that came with it. Now the thing is, I grew up in Singapore and we grew up in a system where Technically, within our education, so many of us are drilled to have the right answers, knowing how to do certain things in a specific way. And as a result, sometimes when we learn art where there is no real structure, no real right or wrong answer, this brings me to lesson number two. I can't control everything. So the thing about learning and doing art especially is that so many of the time we visualize the way in which we hope an art piece to become but when we actually try and translate it and put it to paper it looks totally different it makes us feel as though we are ill-equipped to do the art when really this is about learning to let go of that control Control is really such an illusion where we think that just because we are applying a specific amount of paint on the paper or a specific amount of water that we would be able to control the outcome. But watercolour has taught me so much around control because it is such an illusion where 
we are not able to really predict how a piece of art can dry, how the colours will blend and bleed into each other as you are working on other parts of the painting. So art has really, really taught me about learning to lean into letting go of control and just trusting and letting the art piece paint itself, especially watercolour because the use of water means that there's so much more movement and so much of the time, instead of wanting to have very rigid strokes, learning to let go is about letting the paint paint for you together with the water to create the different blends and bleeds and the effects you want. Now it took me so long to get here because prior to doing watercolour, me and my husband had a really hard time conceiving and we were having difficulties with fertility. And the thing about fertility was that we had to go and seek medical help and when we did that, it also felt like a loss of control where all of a sudden, we were not able to control the outcome of whether or not we were going to be able to have a baby because we were literally in the hands of doctors who were giving me medication and all sorts of things to help me to have that baby and being able to let go of that control where I could tell myself that I had to trust the medical professionals, I had to trust my body and I also had to trust the process. All of this was in alignment with my journey with watercolour as well. Now the thing about watercolour is that I actually dove into it specifically when I started having difficulties with fertility and watercolour had been such a great medium for me to create a distraction away from everything else that was happening because I was so furiously googling around all the different signs and symptoms that were happening in my body, all the different medications that I was getting. There was so much of things I was grasping to control when really there was not much that I could do. Lesson number three is a very common one that you would hear which is comparison is the thief of joy. Now having put my work on Instagram also meant that I got to see how other people were progressing. I got to connect with a community of other watercolour enthusiasts which was so fun but this also meant that inside sometimes I would compare my progress with someone else's progress and so often we would follow people who are way ahead of us and way more advanced and of course we don't know what their story is, what their journey is I followed so many of these artists because I love the style in which they were painting in and a part of me also hoped to be able to someday take classes from them but at the same time, learning to appreciate my own journey and starting to look inwards at where I was and how I was progressing was really something that also took practice beyond the whole perfectionism and control and all of that. This brings me to point number four, which was my first taste of imposter syndrome. Now I had no idea what it was until an artist actually wrote about it in the captions and I started to read about the imposter syndrome that this artist was going through and it started to resonate so much with me. I had no idea that all of those feelings where I was comparing myself to somebody else's work, not feeling competent or having so much self-doubt about how original my artwork was, was really related to imposter syndrome. And at that time, I was in this space where I was trying my best to create artwork that was uniquely mine, that I could call my own, trying to struggle to find my style, but everything that I painted or produced felt like it was someone else's style, whether it was on YouTube or someone that I had followed on Instagram. It was so hard to find my own voice. And the best way for me to quieten all of that noise that was in my head was actually to get away from social media for a while and Pinterest and all of those online spaces where I used to get inspiration and instead what I did was I started to look for inspiration in libraries through books, through walks in the park 
and I started to gain insight from whatever that was outside in the environment instead of what was in the screen. One of the biggest breakthroughs for me when it came to imposter syndrome was the moment I started painting from reference because this actually made me feel like I was painting something based on an interpretation of what I saw from a picture instead of a video or a tutorial that I was following. This also gave me more confidence. I was so much more empowered because I could now see that whatever that I was painting was no longer a copy or a tutorial that was from someone else. It was really something that I was trying to discover on my own. I let go from following step-by-step -step tutorials. I tried new brushes, new materials, new ways of doing things and this really helped me to focus more on exploration and curiosity as well as mixing techniques rather than trying to follow things in a more step-by-step -step manner. I also believe that imposter syndrome really isn't a bad thing and if anything it's when we are starting to notice that we want to be more than where we are at this is a stage where it truly is a milestone because we are starting to grow in awareness of wanting to find our own authentic voice without having to compare or compete with anyone else around. Lesson number five, originality is an illusion. There is no such thing as originality. Now, if you think about all the previous and old artists, so many of them were also replicating certain styles from each other and therefore, it's not possible to have something that is fully original, especially in a space where we are living in right now, where we're getting content left, right, center from different directions. It's so hard to be able to find something that's fully 100% original and never done before. Now that being said, I also felt like this was something that I had to grapple with because it was so closely linked to imposter syndrome where I felt like I needed to find my own original voice. Now finding my own style and originality was something that I realized that I had to change my whole perception around. I needed to tell myself that my style and how I wanted my art to look the direction that I wanted it to go was really dependent on the small little things rather than a big picture. And what I mean by that is that sometimes the style that we really like is just it could be as small as the colors or the shapes or even the textures that we like when it comes to a painting that we see. So many of these things put together is what makes an artwork look or feel a certain way and I think that I had to go beyond this originality thing and tell myself that art was really a feeling more than how it looks that it should be 100% not copied and that nobody else has done it before. That art was actually a feeling that I was trying to evoke in people, whether it was a burst of happiness or even maybe a journey. And so much of this was also a change in mindset for me because once I started to change my mindset around it, it also enabled me to try out styles that I saw other artists doing but create it in a way that was authentic to me in the style or colors or shapes or textures that I really like. I also want to bring this up as a disclaimer here that whatever that I'm sharing right now is really unique to my own experience as a self-taught watercolor artist. Of course, you can have a different opinion from me and I would love to hear what you think with regard to originality and all of the other points that I have brought up because a part of me also feel like when it comes to originality, this is so heavily influenced by our culture, our experience and so many of the things that are around us as well. Now with social media and because we're so interconnected, I do feel that the styles of the artists that we love and we like 
tend to seep into our own art as well because deeply we respect and we admire that art so much there is that possibility for some of the styles of these artists to seep into your work now that doesn't mean that the artwork is not yours because i too feel that with the materials that we have it is also limited with the techniques or things that we can do with the medium and as such i think this is why so many artists start to explore mixed media because then you are able to expand the possibilities the limits to art and hopefully find a style that is unique to you now if you've been watching my progress of my art right here is a sketchbook that i started when it was in 2021 this was a time where i actually returned from taking a break from watercoloring so i mentioned that i had been starting to watercolor around 2016 and then i took a long break and hiatus mostly because i decided to focus all of my attention and energy on caring for my kids and this was also a time that when i took that four year break it also gave me time to reflect on who i wanted to be as an artist and how i wanted to present myself the type of art that i wanted to do and grow in where i wanted to continue to flourish with and this is where I come into point number five where I'm going to share with you that when you are learning on tutorials, whether it's YouTube, Skillshare and whatever platforms there are, I had learned that as a self-taught watercolor artist, so many of these tutorials were actually packed at different levels. They were not necessarily packed at the level that I was ready for and I was not aware of that. So many of the time I would go in and try out a class and it would turn out like an absolute disaster as compared to what the teacher is doing. The teachers who were demonstrating, no matter how clear they were with telling me what colors to mix, what brushes to use, what strokes to start off with first, I could still never create whatever that looked like what they had created and of course that's with the comparison and everything but it was such a frustrating process because a part of me felt like I was trying to learn and hone a skill by trying to apply whatever I knew by going through step-by-step -step tutorials but at the same time so many of these tutorials were not packed at the level that I was ready for and this frustration made me realize that so many of us could be trying out watercolor and as we are doing some of the tutorials and following along not realizing that it really isn't us but more like that we might not necessarily be ready for that exact stage itself so next time when you're going into a YouTube tutorial and you are trying out the skills the step-by-step -step process and all of that I want you to reflect on your own journey and figure out where you are at right now rather than trying to be like what you see on the screen because then it reduces the frustration by a lot more and you're also going to bridge your expectations better so that when you are going to be painting you're going to learn how to enjoy the process instead and that really is the beauty of watercolor this is something that i learned from watercolor with the whole learning to trust the process learning to enjoy where the journey takes me because like i said when we start with the art we really can't predict how it's going to end whatever that you envision in your head often never is at the end so this is where i want to encourage you to find tutorials that are packed at your level or focus on specific skills that you think you want to focus on and improve on and do that instead of trying to be everything and doing every technique at the same time so while i was doing all of these tutorials that were packed at different levels feeling very very discouraged by it this brings me to the next point which i learned that as an artist it was so hard to do it all on my own as a self-taught watercolor artist and not be able to get feedback 
to improve my work. I wasn't sure where I was going wrong. I wasn't sure how to progress, and I felt like my progression was all very limited because I was not able to gauge or determine what areas I needed to improve on. I ended up feeling like I was missing out opportunities to learn and evolve. And not having feedback also meant that the perspective that I had was limited to what I knew, and this actually made me feel like I was seeing my own art through this very narrow lens, and I was literally going in cycles, and this also hindered my progress so much. Now, what helped me to get out of that cycle? Was when I challenged myself to do the 100-day project, and this was where I told myself that I was going to show up as much as I could to paint. And each time I was going to paint, I told myself that I had to try one thing that was new, whether it was a color that I was not usually going to pick from my palette, or whether it was a brush, and. It was through the 100-day project that I found my love for the flat brush, and if you have been watching my tutorials, you would know that I use the flat brush a lot with my watercolor art, and the flat brush has really transformed the way in which I paint. It also has given me new ways of seeing things, and this is where I feel like, even though we are not getting that feedback. It is so important for us to look inwards and train our inner voice to be our roadmap to help to lead us to the direction that we want to go. And this is where the whole feeling of intuition comes in. When artists talk about the feeling of intuition, this is really where you are following your gut, where you are following what your body feels like, what your mind is drawn to, the mood, the feeling, the environment, and all of that coming together to help you to create whatever that you want on your paper. But of course, we can't just use intuition. As the only way to paint, I think that creating is really an alignment of so many other factors that come together before you actually get a right space or mood into painting. And this is something that nobody really talks about, and it's so much more complex because we kind of have to get into a head space where. We set our limiting beliefs aside and kind of quieten down all of those noises before we can actually invite creativity to come in, so that we are able to paint. Now the thing is, I know I've started to digress a little, but one of the biggest factors that really hindered. My practice as a self-taught watercolor artist was probably where I told myself that I was just dabbling. I'm just trying things out, and I invested in so many sub-quality supplies. And what I mean by that was I went into an art store and basically picked out everything that says watercolor on it. You know, whether it's watercolor brush, watercolor paper, watercolor palette, watercolor paints, and I didn't even look into the details like student grade, artist, professional, and so on. Now I know that all of this only matters at some point, and different people have varying thoughts about it, but. I feel like if I had known earlier that watercolor is a water medium, which means that it needs to have materials that can capture and absorb water, so that you get the effects that you want, then I would have invested in good quality paper, so that I wouldn't have been fighting with the materials. That I would be able to get the effects that I wanted right away, instead of thinking that all this while it was because I was not skillful. Now I've been painting on plywood paper or cellulose paper for like the first three years in my watercolor journey, and I never felt like I had the skills or experience that was worthy of. Buying 100% cotton paper. It took me three years of painting on poor quality paper before I decided that I deserve 100% cotton paper. Now, did I think it was too late? It's hard to tell, but I could have avoided those three years of 
you know, low morale and feelings of discouragement, I could have just gone straight into getting the effects that I wanted and gaining all of that success without having to fight with the paper and the materials. I wish that someone had told me that before, that self-worth was not pegged to the type of materials that I needed to get. So if you are starting out with watercolor, I would encourage you to just get the materials that are appropriate for capturing water you know whether it's brushes that can hold water or whether it's paper that is meant to absorb watercolor paper uh, watercolor paint and water and this obviously most of the time it's 100% cotton now I know that it's a lot of an investment but I also feel like if we choose to invest our time in creating we should and we deserve the materials that are meant for that medium so that we actually experience a level of success related to because we're using the right tools rather than feeling discouraged because we're not using the right one. It's almost like saying you can't use a butter knife to cut a steak. You can, but it will going to be taking you a very long time to get there. And I think that was what I went through when I took my time to decide that cotton paper was not for me until three years later. Now I have to share with you the last point which is that one of the things I learned as a self-taught watercolor artist was that I was such a people pleaser and I had no idea I had that in me or well I had an idea but I didn't realize that it was going to be a factor that would really be detrimental to my creative business and how I actually ventured through this creative business. So when I was midway into my practice sometime around 2017 on the time that i found out that i was pregnant with my firstborn i launched my website and at that time i had been getting a lot of inquiries people had been asking me about you know wanting to paint wedding invitations and cards and things like that and i was really excited to oblige of course so i went ahead and i did lots of customized cards i had commissioned wedding bouquets to paint i did to feel more and more burnt out and i realized that i had so much difficulty saying no to projects that did not align with the style that i loved i had been receiving clients who would pick out a photo from pinterest and ask me if i could paint in a similar style and even though it was not a style that I liked or I was known for or I knew how to do, I would still do it just because I always felt like it was such an opportunity, I didn't want to let the opportunity go and it was also a part of me feeling like I was a people pleaser. This people pleaser thing was made worse when I started showing up on social media and I had a lot more people following me i started to feel this sense of responsibility where i had to only show up in the style that they liked and i was so fearful of losing followers just because i changed my style or i started to do something else whether it was exploring new mediums or new ways of painting I wanted to keep up with what people were used to seeing and what they liked me for and at that time was watercolour. But deep inside, I was still so drawn to calligraphy and the old art of writing and sometimes I wanted to go back into it and I noticed that every time I posted anything that was calligraphy related, you know, I would drop followers and I would lose people's interest and this is where I started to notice this people-pleasing self within me was such a prominent part where I felt burnt out in wanting to show up for people in the way that they wanted me to show up rather than in a way that I wanted to show up. And the only time that I felt like this was a part of me that 
I outgrew was probably when I returned after that four year break and coming back after I became a mom and an artist, I have to say that I'm definitely way more confident and sure of what I want, who I want to be and how I want to show up. I no longer have that part of me where I worry about what others would think about my paintings and my style because I'm in this space where right now I accept that that was a part of me before and right now I want to show up because this is who I am and what I want to be. And I've learned to love myself, my art and my process so much to the extent that I know that whoever who follows me and likes my art or takes a class from me is someone who likes me for me and I don't have to show up to them in any other way because that's going to be so hard to keep up. So summarizing everything and putting everything together, I hope that this entire episode has given you some insight on some of the different things that I've learned about myself as a self-taught watercolor artist as I navigate my way through learning how to paint, through understanding all the different internal struggles that tend to bubble up within me and regardless of all of these feelings that I face, I believe that it's not unique to me and you probably can resonate with some of these points especially if you have been creating, if you are self-taught and my hope for you is that at some point you learn to embrace the various parts of you because that's something that I'm still learning where I tell myself that there might be certain times when Miss Perfectionist creeps up or Miss Fear of Failure comes in and knocks on my door and all of these different parts of me is not flaws but really they are parts of me to be embraced because it's because of all of these parts of me that I start to learn who I really am both internally as a result create art in the way that I do right now. Share with me in the comments what exactly you resonated most with and to end off this video, I just want you to remember that nothing in nature blooms forever and wherever you are at in your journey, learn to appreciate it for what it is. And until then, I'll see you again next time. Bye!